they're talking about. So effectively, black fishing, the women accused of pretending to be black. So this is an evolution of racial dollars. Though. It's fucking intriguing as hell. It's really, really interesting. It's something that I kind of have been wondering a lot about since watching the Rachel Dozo documentary because Rachel Dozo Do- Do- documentary um, is very illuminating because as much as the, as much as she's batshit crazy, there's also parts of her story that make sense of where she ended up where she was, right? She grew, she kind of grew up in an abusive household according to her. Her parents kind of argue against it. Um, her parents adopted two black kids who she kind of took on um, who she kind of um, through the abuse relationship with her family she kind of took on a bit of a motherly role she got accepted more within the black community that made her feel welcomed so she had a bit of an identi- identity crisis and the closest thing that she could kind of uh, identify to was the black community that kind of embraced her and she kind of took on and she kind of took it you know full full force right she kind of adopted everything about it and it suddenly rose herself up the ranks of the nca double p and then she became i think the leader until she had to resign when the kind of the news uh broke but this story black fishing was an is a kind of evolution of this sort of thing right so uh, it's kind of you know plays on the term black um catfishing you know where girls and boys are for the most part you know pretend to be one person online in order to kind of lure in order to kind of seduce somebody and then you know when you know, they usually fucking look like a bloody train when you meet them in real life. But this is an evolution of it. So that's very, very interesting. And I'm going to play this video from Newsbeat that kind of speaks on, on, on this topic. And it's a, with a girl called, what's her name? A- Aga. Aga, Bra- Aga Brotokowska. Ada, Bro- Ada Bros- Brotowska. Ada Brotowska. Right? Cool. So here's the video I'm going to play from BBC. You have to listen to this now if you're listening via... Audio. I've had no surgery, so I can't take a few blips. I can't, I can't remove my fake bum plants. Like, I can't change. I can't. I'm not gonna stop going gym so that I grow my size. I'm not white, white. Okay, I might be polished, but I'm not white, white. Uh, with tanning, occasionally, yes, I tan. I'm not saying I don't tan and I just wake up brown. But it's like, I don't do it maliciously to the black. I just do it as a norm. I don't think about it. I had like um, over 200 DMs. Um, some of them said just said kill yourself. I understand why the Twitter spread was made because, and it makes sense to use my pictures because just without looking at anything or knowing me, it makes sense to put those two pictures. But it's just the assumptions that were being made were just very incorrect. Like my captions are nothing to do with anything of like black culture. My, I, there's nothing that would implicate that I've said I'm black or a lot of comments said, can you wipe that up and that wipe that off and I'm thinking oh, that's how I am and I can't change <laughs> that I look a certain way. Oh like, shit, wipe that off. I, turn, I, I might go like a shade or two. Bruv, when's the last person you've seen that's Polish as olive skin, man? Shut the fuck up, man. This girl's lying. Olive skin. What? <laughs> dark, dark. She'd get it though. She's fucking banging. God damn. So for example, braids, I would just probably be more cautious and with hairstyles and probably not get braids again just because it offended so many people. But with things like tanning, I'm, I don't feel like I've done. Imagine not getting braids because you're you're afraid people might accuse you of putting on blackface. Jesus Christ, man! It's it's a good place where we're in now, right? Where people are very um culturally and um culturally sensitive right i think it's a good place to be in because sometimes you know things that happened in the past won't necessarily happen nowadays right um a young a young prince harry thought it was a good idea to dress up in a nazi uniform during a fancy dress party because for the bands right but i don't think harry now would do the same thing i don't think he'd go to a, a fancy dress party um dressed up trying to look like michael jordan right he wouldn't do that he's a bit more culturally away he's a bit more woke right um i don't think Meghan markle would allow him to step through step out the door you know with a black black face on do you know what I mean? And, and, uh, and a flipping bald hat or something like that. That wouldn't happen nowadays, but Jesus Christ. Imagine not allowing someone to have on braids because you think it's just, it's nuts. Anyway. Anything in a malicious way. Racism is still there. Uh, it's not right for people to use certain things from the culture in a malicious way to kind of get endorsements or whatever because it's not right. Colorism still exists. I'm not definitely not neglecting that. Um, 
I'm not standing and saying no, this doesn't happen, and a white privilege, is, white privilege is not a thing. I'm not here to say that. I was just kind of hoping to say that the assumptions you are making are wrong. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, this this is fucking interesting as fuck to me, right? Because again. I just think the wider world is kind of waking up to things that I think if you're from ends, you are aware of anyway. If you're from ends, you know for sure at least more than five people from ends that weren't black, that were probably more black than you were. We've all had those friends in that area. I know I've had a few of them in my life growing up and they're still like that from to this day, right? Um, they're, they, they grow up in a very hard environment, which we all have to grow up in. But they're at a bit of a disadvantage because they're not quote unquote sorry they're dis they're a bit disadvantaged because they're not black right so they kind of have to overcompensate and sometimes it can be for the better sometimes it can be for the worse right it can be they can be a bit corny with it sometimes it can be for the better where they kind of work work their way up to be kind of lieutenants of gangs um, just because they're white and they had to kind of overcompensate how tough they were and end up beating up everybody in the area and everyone's like okay this guy is not only strong for a a white guy he's strong he's the strongest guy in the ends regardless right and then on the flip side you got girls in areas who grew up in areas where it was predominantly black right area or predominantly black culture area and just because you know that was the only options you had available into if you're into dudes you only had to choose from the guys around, that are in in around your area and if they all happen to like a certain style of girl you had to play up to that you might then change when you go to college or university you might revert back to being you know sarah from next door but when you were in ends you were fucking sandra do you know what I mean you had a bit of spice about you you're a little bit you know you're a little bit feisty or whatever it may be called or stush whatever it may be called yeah you, you had a little bit of attitude about you right you took off some you took on some kind of mannerisms that you kind of learned um from the environment that you were in and it's something that we we're, we're, we're very aware of and there's also another part of this that no one wants to speak about where it's like this girl anja she's she's polish right and she's saying she's olive skin which I don't necessarily believe i don't think i've ever seen an, a, an olive skin polish person in my life but then that being said the only pros people I've seen ever are the pros that move, that kind of emigrate, um, that kind of immigrate um, from Poland to the UK. And they might be a, only a particular kind of, they might be only, they might be a, they, they, they obviously don't represent the whole entire population. Um, I know for sure that our landlord, um, yeah, our landlord is probably a good example. She's dark haired. She's not olive skinned, but you can tell she's Polish, but she's not, she's not like pale, right? Which is, I think this is what this Anya girl is kind of like talking about. Like, she, she, I know she doesn't look, she doesn't look like Bill Burr, right? Um, she's not that pale, but I don't think all Polish people are that pale anyway. But it's just, the other thing people don't want to talk about is that if you're built the way this girl is, right? She's saying she hasn't got any, any sort of, um, she hasn't had any work done. I'm going to put a picture up here again. She probably hasn't had any work done and she kind of, this is all natural. If you're built the way she is, there is something that needs to be said to that. How many? There's not that many white guys that are going to be into you, really, are there? Think about it, right? I, I, I have, I, you know, I've, I've, t I've talked quite candidly to a lot of my white male friends about this on, on, on a number of occasions, and they're just not into this kind of look. They might be into it nowadays, where it's kind of become a bit more trendy, but for the most part, white guys don't like girls that look like this. They want their girls to be a little bit more slim looking, right? So if you're built the way this girl's built. And you happen to live in a black neighborhood and only black guys are, are coming after you, then it's it makes complete sense that you're gonna kind of maybe um you're gonna exaggerate some of your features and you're going to maybe emphasize certain things in order to attract a certain kind of mate. And looking at her, right, I'm sure, I'm very, very, very sure that she likes rum. And when I mean rum, I mean black guys. I'm pretty certain that most of her ex-boyfriends, if not all of them, have been black, right? So, if that's the case, can you be blackfishing? If is that really blackfishing, or is that just you playing into you playing up to people that are into you? I don't know, man. Because whenever I see a very, whenever I see a, whenever I see a stereotypical Caucasian lady who's very curvy, like ridiculously curvy, right, and she happens to be the one in the group of girlfriends who's looking after the bags or on her phone. I get a little bit sad because obviously she's in the wrong environment. Because if you put her in, another, if you pop, if you pop those group of girls in another nightclub, right, that happens to play Bashman and hip hop, she'd be the one getting dragged all over the dance floor, right? People trying to pull her and say, "Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up?" And her friends would be getting air on air on road. But in another pub, in like a bar, all bar one, for instance, 
her friend with the PlayStation bum is the one that everyone wants. So if you're that girl, what do you do? Do you do you kind of accentuate your curves and play up to the kind of um, that archetype of a curvy woman that happens to be olive skinned and a little bit, you know, exotic? Or do you just, I don't know, I don't know. Or do you just like stay where, or do you just be who you are and hope some regular schmegular white dude's going to be into it? Which he isn't really. Um, yeah, I don't know. And also there's that weird bubble of girls that exist, right? That kind of weird kind of... Um, race of girl they're kind of an instagram race right it's kind of a derivative of the kardashian clan they're not they're not necessarily black they're not necessarily mediterranean they're not necessarily um latino they're just this weird race in between where everyone's trying to be it's sort of like a beige it's like you know when you you know when you mix all the paint colors into one pot and it turns brown but instead of being muddy brown it's sort of like a beigey like it's like i don't know how to describe it. it's nothing it's like a it's like a race that doesn't exist we've it's a it's a new race we've, we've created so i don't i'm not even sure if she's even blackfishing she's just whatever instagram race she is she's kind of accentuating that because yes yeah, she's attractive girl yes yeah, she has a a great body but you see that all the time it's you're a bit i'm a bit inoculized but i don't get that era it's not that exciting anymore to me right just because you see it all the time don't get me wrong i'm not saying i'm above it and if she wasn't available i wouldn't fucking dive on like i was in a, you know an olympic size swimming pool but i'm just saying that there is a there is a type of female that exists that kind of occupies that kind of zone and you know they they tend to like black dudes and they tend to be into black things like i don't know what else is to say it um but i can understand if you're a black girl these kind of girls do sometimes get a lot more uh, love than you would maybe. Um, maybe they take up, they take on some of the physical characteristics that a stereotypical black girl would have without necessarily the black girl attitude that some guys complain about. So you can sort of think that can be a bad thing. Um, I know some work people kind of complain that, you know, these people like to take on some of the um black characteristics all the good parts and they kind of push away all the bad they kind of avoid all the bad parts like getting stopped by police all the time um, um not being given the not being given um not being uh, given what's that thing called when you're not being allowed to be innocent before trial all that sort of shit so some people can get annoyed by that but i don't know man i don't know she's playing up to her she's playing she's playing into it a little bit she's kind of leaning into it I'm not sure if she's if you can find olive skin Polish people. I'm not sure if they exist. If they did exist, why sh she'd look? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's fucking bizarre to me. It's really bizarre. But I do maintain that there is another race of in there is a race that exists out there of Instagram girls that aren't necessarily black, that aren't Latino, and aren't Mediterranean. I don't know what they are. They're just this weird thing that exists on social media. Usually, they're, they're the kind of girl that has like loads of flags on their name, right? Um, under the name of where of the, all the countries of all the countries that somebody's from that's from their family is from. And it's not necessarily their lineage. It's not like their mum is half this, half that, and their dad's half that, half. It's usually just whatever. They pluck it from fucking thin air, or they take a twenty three and me test and just decide that they're I don't know forty percent uh, Brazilian. But yeah, it's just a strange place to be because I'm sure um, some people from ends remember a time. There was a time in ends right where it was fucking taboo to even mention that you are from africa that was like a you you were kind of uh, looked down upon if you admitted you were just like 100 percent african you had to always say you had a bit of spice in you like you had brazilian in you i remember those there'll be nigerian girls right this is this is back in 2001 i don't know when i don't know nowadays maybe it's a bit different right but imagine a nigerian girl back in the day when i was in fucking year eight telling me that she's hard brazilian like what the fuck are you talking about when would a nigerian meet a brazilian right especially nowadays especially then now yeah but back then come on man fuck off like i'm 50 percent brazilian no you're not you're not brazilian at all you probably don't even know where brazil is on the map brazilian fuck out of here man like it was fucking nuts like no one wanted to say they were african everyone kind of even the Car even caribbeans had a bit of a you know whatever you had to kind of inject a bit of you know dominican republic in you you know kind of jazz up a bit fucking crazy to see how far we progress which is awesome i think it's it's probably been it's probably been um as a consequence of, of, of Afro, Afro pop and Afro beats and Afro house, right? Afro house from Southern Africa, from like South, South Africa and Angola, and then Afro pop, Afro beats from like Western Africa and uh, West Africa, yeah, for the most part. I think that's what's really made that kind of, that kind of um, thing going pop and going global. That's kind of allowed African people to be a little bit more proud of where they're from and take a little bit more 
pride in their culture and not try and pretend that they're fucking Caribbean or whatever or South American, which is always annoying. But Jesus, imagine that. We're living in a world now where Polish girls want to be black. That's insane. Insane. In fucking insane. You never really... Imagine you never fucking realize that. And again, I don't think it's a black thing. I think it's an Instagram culture thing. Whatever that Instagram culture thing is that exists, right? You know those kids that do those fucking dances and all that sort of shit? It's, some, it's that. It's not even a, It's not even black. It's something else because black is like, you know, drill, right? That's what I think of that. And it's not that hard. It's not that aggressive. It's like another version of it. It's like a little bit more uh, sanitized, right? It's a little bit more PG friendly, for instance. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I just think if you're, if, you're a, if you're a standard Polish girl and you happen to have a ridiculous figure, it's going to be tough for you to find another white dude that's gonna be into that sort of stuff i just don't i just don't i just don't think they're into it i just think they like their girls a bit flat which is not bad for you i'm just like this girl's a bit skinny right i think even big girls even even girls that aren't curvy girls that are just fat suffer a lot in white who's that girl um Gemma collins over i i'm not i'm sure i i don't know she seems like a nice girl but i don't think there's many guys beating down her door white or black right like she's just a big girl you just you know it's just hard to find a mate but it's harder to find a mate within a culture that doesn't really um, fetishize over bigger ladies. But you know, I think black people, you know, by and large, you know, you go to any go to any bashment night, and for the most part, the ones that are getting absolutely slammed against the wall and chucked up into the into the air five feet high are the big girls for the most part. Some tiny girls get flinged about from time to time, but for the most part, everyone loves to fucking run and jump onto a massive girl, right? Um, massive, you know. All due respects, you know. No, I'm not. I'm not taking a piss out of the bigger girls because I think everyone needs and appreciates some sort of loving. But fucking hell, what world we live in, man? Black fishing. Imagine that. Black fishing. So yeah, big up Anya Batakowski. Big up her for not changing her name. She she did the whole like you know tanning herself and giving herself braids, making herself look like she's I don't know Puerto Rican. But she didn't um she didn't change her name, which is you know respect to you, man. Respect kept the name. I mean Poland strong. You know what I mean stand up. Tisky and that. 